Hi, welcome to Dixie Storytime World. Monster Stories, The Abominable Snowman, a story from Nepal. In these pages, you will meet Rame, Rame's mother, and the Shokpa. The Shokpa is a wild creature living in the mountains. His hair is as thick as a bear's and as white as snow. He is sometimes called an abominable snowman. He is a terrible beast. Or is he? Chapter 1. The Very Lazy Boy Long ago and far away, there lived a poor woman and her son, Rame. They lived in a small hut high in the mountains. Rame was a kind boy and his mother loved him very much. But Rame was lazy. In fact, he was very, very lazy. He just sat outside all day doing nothing. Hour after hour, he watched the birds flying and the clouds floating by. His mother asked him to collect wood for the fire, but Rame just sat, so the fire died out. His mother asked him to sweep the floor, but Rame just sat, so the dust got thicker and thicker. One day, Rame's mother lost her temper. She was angry. Lazy bones, she shouted at him. You are lazy and good for nothing. Get out of this house. Don't come back until you have done some honest work. She chased him out of the hut and slammed the door behind him. Bang! Rame was very surprised. He did not understand why his mother was so angry. He walked off into the mountains, wondering what to do. He walked and thought. He thought and walked. Soon Rame was a long, long way from home. He was worried. He knew that evening was coming. It would soon be dark. Chapter 2 The Hidden Cave Rame's tummy rumbled like thunder. He realized that he was very hungry. Maybe there's something to eat in my pocket, he said to himself. He put his hand into his pocket and scratched about. What luck! He found three bits of stale bread. He sat down among the twisted roots of an old tree and got comfortable. While he prepared to eat a simple meal, Rame chatted to himself about the crumbs of bread. Hmm, he said. Should I just eat one now and save the other two for later? Or should I gobble up all three at once? Now, Rame did not know it, but there was something hidden beneath him. Under the roots of the tree where he sat was a cave. In the cave lived a Shokpa with his wife and their baby. A Shokpa is a magical mountain creature. It is also called an abominable snowman. Abominable means horrible. A Shokpa's hair is as thick as a bear's to keep out the cold. And it is as white as the snow to help him hide. So a Shokpa looks like a horrible snowman. The Shokpa heard Rame talking and began to tremble with fear. A terrible monster standing over our cave, the Shokpa said to his wife. I think he wants to eat us. I heard him talking. He is going to eat us. He is trying to decide whether to eat us up one at a time or eat us all together. The Shokpa's wife clutched her child tightly to her hairy chest. The frightened family huddled together. Their sharp teeth chattered and their bony knees clattered together like drumsticks. Oh, terrible monster, called the Shokpa. Please, please do not eat my family. I beg you, we are very hairy and very thin. We are not very tasty at all. Promise not to eat us and I will give you my magic wand. It will give you whatever you wish for. Chapter 3. The Magic Wand The Shokpa's voice boomed up from below. It made Rame leap to his feet. Rame was amazed, but he wasn't afraid. He realized that the creature below was afraid of him. The Shokpa thought that Rame was the monster. So Rame decided to play a trick. In a gruff and growly voice, he boomed back, Hello! Well, I suppose I could use your wand as a toothpick. I have just had a bite to eat. I think that one of the goats I ate is stuck in my back teeth. As soon as he had spoken, a wand appeared out of the ground in front of him. Rame snatched it up in delight, then he set off home to show his mother. But the sun began to set behind the mountains. Rame had only travelled a short distance, and he was still a long way from home. He knew that he had to find somewhere to stay for the night. Rame looked here and he looked there for shelter. Just as he was about to give up, he spotted a little shack through the trees. He ran to the shack and knocked on the door. An old woodcutter answered and invited Rame in. 
Rame was so excited about his adventure that he told the whole story to the man. He told him all about the magic wand. Test it now, just to make sure it really works, said the old man. He had a wicked gleam in his eye, but Rame did not see it. So Rame wished for a meal for the two of them. Before they could blink, a delicious feast appeared. There was juicy pork and soft noodles, roast chicken, spicy lentils, ripe fruits and a big bowl of sweet molasses. Soon the old man and Rame had eaten all they could. Then before they could blink, the empty dishes disappeared again. Rame curled up on the floor and fell fast asleep. His tummy was full of food and his head was full of happy dreams. Chapter 4 The Rotten Trickster The next morning Rame thanked the old woodcutter for letting him sleep in the shack. Then he picked up the wand and left. He was feeling very happy. He hopped and skipped and sang all the way home. Look, mother, he cried as he ran into their little hut. An abominable snowman gave me his magic wand. It grants wishes. It will give us everything we want. We will never be poor again. Abominable snowman? Magic wand? repeated Ramey's mother. She could not believe it. What nonsense! You are such a daydreamer, Ramey. It's true, argued Ramey. Just watch this. Oh, magic wand, please give my mother a bag of golden coins. But nothing happened. The sly old woodcutter had taken the wand for himself. That was why he had a wicked gleam in his eye. He had put a plain stick in its place. Rame shook the stick. He tapped it on the table. He waved it widely around his head. But still no gold appeared. You silly, silly boy, shouted his mother. She did not know whether to laugh or to cry. You are such a fool. Throw away that stupid bit of wood and make yourself useful. Fetch some water from the well for me. But Rame was already out of the door. He raced back to the shopper's cave. He was sure that it was a monster who had tricked him. When he reached the old tree, he shouted at the roots, Shopper, this time I'm going to eat your whole family for breakfast. You are a rotten trickster. The poor shopper did not know what Rame was talking about. He asked Rame to explain. When the shopper had heard Rame's tale, he said, Oh, terrible monster, I did not trick you. It must have been the old woodcutter. Take my wise magic wand. Command it to beat anyone who touches it without your permission. Then go and stay again in the old man's shack. See what happens. Chapter 5 The Beaten Trickster A second wand appeared from out of the ground. Rame picked it up and did what the abominable snowman suggested. First, he commanded the wand to beat anyone who touched it without his permission. Then he went back to the woodcutter's shack. He used the second wand to wish for another feast for himself and the old man. And what a feast it was! After they had eaten, Rame fell fast asleep. In the middle of the night, Rame was woken up by the most terrible noise. There was crashing furniture, a strange thumping sound and loud cries for help. The second wand was chasing the old woodcutter around and around the shack. The old man was shouting out at the top of his voice, Help! Help! Tell it to stop! he yelled. He tried to get out of the way of the flying stick. Rame felt a bit sorry for the old man. Stop, he told the wand. Then the terrified woodcutter admitted that he had stolen the first wand. He apologized a thousand times and returned the first wand to Rame. Immediately, Rame wished for the second wand to fly back to the shopper's wife. Then he returned home with the first magic wand. He wished for a fine new house, and it appeared. He wished for enough gold to last him and his mother the rest of their lives, and it appeared. His mother was amazed and delighted. All their wishes were granted. From that day on, they lived in peace and had plenty. And Rame did not forget the shopker and his family. He also made a few secret wishes for them. May your cave be snug and dry, he whispered. May your tummies be always full. May your fur always keep you warm, and may the three of you never be eaten by monsters. The End